Let's turn to Australia now, where water temperature extremes around the Great Barrier Reef are the warmest for 400 years. Over the last decade, it's resulted in more mass bleaching events of the coral. Scientists in Australia who have examined the skeletons of coral and historic data say the evidence is clear that the reef is in danger and governments have to act now against climate change. Victoria Gill reports. A vast natural wonder. The Great Barrier Reef is a colourful, living, underwater ecosystem. But climate change is transforming it. It's caused five mass coral bleaching events here in just the last nine years. And in a report in the journal Nature, scientists have shown that rising temperatures now threaten the survival of the reef. What is it like to see a healthy reef bleached? It's very white, quickly algae forms on top of the, the corals, which turns them a kind of brown colour. It's not a pretty sight. The scientists examined long coral cores, samples drilled out of the bodies of centuries-old coral. <laughs> These contain chemical clues that reveal how warm the water was during the life of the reef. Combining this with historical sea temperature records showed that in just the last decade, temperatures around the Great Barrier Reef were the warmest of the past 400 years. The high sea surface temperatures are extreme in this context of the last four centuries, and we're very confident in the reconstruction that we've performed. It's um, been exhaustively tested, and unfortunately it shows this, this terrible news for the reef. Bleached, heat-stressed coral can recover, but if the current rate of global warming continues and the high temperatures don't relent, it won't have chance to. Well, the science tells us that the Great Barrier Reef is in danger. We have the answers to this already. We have targets. Uh, we have agreements internationally. I think we need to put the politics aside and get on with it. Even if international targets to limit global warming are met, many of the corals here are likely to be lost. But if action is taken now on climate change, scientists say that parts of this natural wonder can still be saved. Victoria Gill, BBC News. Let's speak to Mark Eakin now, who is the Corresponding Secretary at the International Coral Reef Society. Mark, thank you very much for your time today. We've covered the crisis on the coral reefs a lot here on BBC News. This is further evidence of the impact of the climate crisis on the corals. Uh, why is it so important that we, that we focus on the coral reef? What does it tell us about what's happening on a broader level? Well, at this point, the study that you're referencing that the, it was just reported on, look back over the last 400 years and with great accuracy is providing information about what was actually happening in, on the reef during that time period. And it agrees with what we've been seeing in other global records, that climate change has been increasing temperatures around the world. The, we've recently seen the warmest year on record. It's going to be devastating to many ecosystems, especially those uh, around coral reefs. Uh, so what is being done to try to um, stabilize the situation? Bring us up to date on that. Well, there are a couple of things. One is uh, the discussion that's going on in UNESCO in terms of uh, protecting the Great Barrier Reef to a greater degree. It's a World Heritage Site, but it it's amazing at this point that they haven't yet uh, determined that it's a, a World Heritage Site at risk because the evidence is definitely showing the high risk on the Great Barrier Reef. But what really needs to be going on is the action by governments, individuals, and uh, large international bodies to be moving us off of fossil fuels as quickly as possible. We need to quit putting carbon dioxide, methane, and other heat-trapping gases into the atmosphere. So more urgency needed, you say. Uh, I'm sure lots of campaigners would agree with that message. Um, I, I wonder, is there any sign of growth on the coral reef? We're, we're hearing about coral that's dying off, but is there any growth happening? There's a little. There's some recovery that goes on. The problem that happens in these massive bleaching events like we've been seeing in recent years is all of the corals die off in an area or most of the corals in an area will die off. And then the fast growing corals come back. So you hear, oh, it's looking great because we've got all these corals that have, have grown back in place. But those are just the fast growing weedy corals. The 500 year old corals, like the ones that were used in this study, uh, 
400 year old corals, you know, those take 400 years to grow. You can't grow those back in a few years. Okay, Mark, thank you very much for talking to us. Mark Eakin from the International Coral Reef Society.